Yes, I thought it was ridiculous. You know what, Al? I don't think, I truly don't think, you know, I wanted VAR to come into the game, but not for these sort of no. slight decisions. That's got to be done by the eye, by the linesman, all these decisions. Not because it's Tottenham, but VAR being brought in, I thought, for the clear and obvious. Your yeah. Maradona handball, your Henri against Ireland. You know, I, I think we've got to go back to letting a lot of these things uh, go with the referees and the linesmen on the pitch because we're just making the game a farce in many ways. And what worries me as well, Al, is people in the stadium are not going to go. Players can't celebrate anymore, and that's no. a massive part. Absolutely. Football. You go to football to watch your team score, and as a player, Al, you know as well as I do what the, exhil- and Ray, what the exhilaration of, of scoring a goal. Yeah. You know? yeah. And uh, you, you can't celebrate because you're thinking, oh, I've got to wait for VAR now. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It really is. And the time as well, Glenn. I mean, everyone was yeah. looking at each other. What was happening? Four, was it four minutes or something like that? You, how can it be well, four it minutes? Becomes... That, that, that means it's not obvious mm. uh, mistake, isn't it? Exactly, exactly, Ray. And I think, you know, if there's another guy sitting up there with a different eye, he might have given that. It's that tight. Mm. So you're, we're even now, when you go back to, to, the, to the screen, to the video, you're looking, at, you're looking at somebody's decision again. So you're taking it away from VAR in many ways. It's, it's an individual, another referee. Well, I looked at that and thought, no, I'm, I'm, I'm saying that's onside. Because it's about the, you know, it's where the ball, it, it was in front of the ball only, well, fractions and I yeah. don't know whether or can be fractions I think cricket can be Glenn just on Spurs listen I, I you know I hate not not slagging more old, some old clubs off but I, I get so frustrated that with Tottenham's firepower up front Glenn I just need someone more creative in midfield to supply the service to the front players. I think it's crying out for someone in there, Glenn, in the midfield, yeah. a bit of class and a bit of adventure that goes forward rather than sideways all the time or back. Well, well I think that's what every Spurs fan is crying out for. Um, I don't think uh, Antonio is going to look that way. He's, he's played with those two. Benton Kerr and Hoybier are very good players, but sometimes when they play together, I think one of them with a creator in there would be the perfect balance, in my opinion. But I think uh, Antonio wants to play those two sort of holding players and go with his firepower up front. But yeah, I'm absolutely with you, uh, Alan. I think they need some, they need some uh, creativity because at the moment it's down to them. It's down to Harry dropping in and creating. Um, when I think you know the, the style of players have got up the top of the pitch, you know. If you did have that Ericsson when he was at Tottenham, yeah. for example, Madison. you know, uh, Madison, I agree, whoever said that in the background, Madison, I, I love him. I, I, I think he's one that should be in the England squad. I think if he was playing in the top, no disrespect to Leicester, but if he was playing in the top six team, he would be absolutely sensational and probably a shoe in. But, um, you know, someone like that who comes in off the, off the lines, creative, you've only got to look at the best teams in the country and they've got them sort of well, Yeah. Spot on. Talk Sport Breakfast with Alan Brazil. Thursday and Friday morning, 6 till 10. On AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.